who will be the Messiah. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 we read, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Therefore, he will be the seed of woman. Genesis chapter 22 verses 17 and 18 says, That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Therefore he shall be from the lineage of Abraham. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18 says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. It reveals that he will be a Jew from Israel. Prophet Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 that, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Therefore Messiah will be a God-man. Prophet Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Prophet Jeremiah prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 5 and 6, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. So he will be a king from the lineage of David. The prophet Isaiah further describes that the seven spirits with which the Messiah will be blessed. In Isaiah 11, 2 we read, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Prophet Zechariah prophesied in Zechariah chapter 3 verse 8 and 9. Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. For behold the stone that I have laid before Joshua. Upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. So he will the high priest. In Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 and 2 we read, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. In Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 we read, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, thy king cometh unto thee! He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt the foal of an ass. Prophet Isaiah also prophesied in Isaiah chapter 49 verse 6. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Therefore he will also be the light to Gentiles, so that God's salvation will be for everyone that is unto the end of the earth. In Zechariah chapter 11 verses 12 and 13 we read, And I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter a goodly price that I was prized out of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Prophet Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah chapter 53 verses 1 to 12, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, 
yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. He will be the suffering servant and will die. In Daniel chapter 7 verses 13 and 14 we read, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion, and glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Therefore, he will be the Son of Man and the King of all people, nations and languages for everlasting dominion. In Isaiah chapter 2 verses 1 to 5 we read, The word that Isaiah the son of Amoz saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore, he will be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. First and foremost, the Savior of humanity must be God. Not only must he be God, but he has to be a perfect human physically and morally. Now we know throughout the Old Testament, all of the sacrifices were a type of Messiah, and the animal to be sacrificed had to be perfect physically perfect physically. That's as far as the animals could go. But the implication here is for the Messiah. He had to be perfect physically as well as morally. No sin of his own, or he would have had to die for his own sin. If somebody claims to be Messiah, they have to be perfect physically. Not only God, because he's going to claim to be God, but he has to be perfect physically, yet without sin. There's a heavy criterion. He has to be both God and man in order to pay the infinite penalty for sin. But we do know that Messiah had to pay the full penalty for sin, and that full penalty is death. Not just physical death, but separation from God forever, if he fails.